Hi guys, I just wanted to walk you through the Paper One template that we'll be using this year. The reason I use this template is because I feel like it's a way to make sure that you've taken care of everything you need to take care of. Think of it as a strategy. When you approach every Paper One, there are certain things you need to do. And you need to always keep them organized so that they all sort of work together well. So that's why I have this set up the way I have it. The question you're going to do, or I'm sorry, the question I'm going to use as an example is question 2A from the November 13 paper. I don't know if you've done this one or not. It's actually a very simple question, or at least it seems very simple. And to me, these are some of the most dangerous because they almost seem to be too easy. Let's start off with talking about explain what that means. If you go over and look back at the command terms, we see that explain says give a detailed account including reasons or causes. So to give an example to this, if someone asked me to explain what I did this summer, a bad answer would be, well, I went to the United States, or even I went to Utah and California, or even I went to Utah and San Diego and Mammoth Lakes. Both of those are in California. All three of those are fine, and even the third example, I'm sorry, none of those three are fine, even though the third example is pretty specific. When you explain, you have to include reasons or causes. So I would have to say, as an answer to that, well, I went to Utah because that's where my wife's uh, family lives. I went to San Diego to see my brother, and I went to Mammoth to see my friends and spend some time in the mountains. So for this question, a really bad answer, but it seems like it's the right answer, would be, well, they impose direct taxes to limit consumption or they, expo uh, they impose direct taxes to uh, raise revenue. Both of those are true, and they're part of the right answer, but you have to give reasons or causes to have really explained. So let's, let's go down to where I have translation and decipher. Sometimes economic speak is really, really complex and you have to break it down. I don't think this is one of those questions, so you don't really need to translate. But I think you do need to decipher. You need to say, okay, what is it that they're really looking for here? It's, you know, some red flags should go off that this is almost too easy. So what is it that they're really looking for? I deciphered it like this. Indi uh, indirect taxes are unpopular. Nobody really wants them. So it being economics, there's always cost and benefit. So if the cost is they're unpopular, well, what's the benefit for, uh, for the government? Okay, so indirect taxes are unpopular, so what are the benefits or goals of the government when they impose them? So that's all I mean by that second box, and I think that's an important little, um, little job to go through in your mind to think about, okay, what is the question really looking for? Okay, so now when we look at the four big squares, the first square is about definitions. I think you guys know that since indirect taxes is in the question itself, you need to define that. I'll talk about what thesis and others means in a second. It's not really time for that yet. Um, and actually, we're going to move on right now. We will put some more definitions in here because it's important to typically define between two to three terms. Um, but for now, we're, we're going to leave that be. What I want you guys to look at are the next two boxes, so the diagram and the example. If you go back to looking at the question itself, we see that in part B, even though it's not now, um, this issue of sustainability is there. And remember, sustainability means you know not using up something too quickly, uh, using something in such a way that it's available for future generations. So the first thing I thought of for an example is um, you know oil, petroleum, gas, whatever you want to call it. And before we go too much further. Let me talk for just a second about why that example box is there. The IB has an expectation that you're paying attention to current events, that you have knowledge of economic events, not just in a textbook or in theory, but you kind of know what's going on in the world. So you don't want to use a generic ex example here if you can avoid it. 
it's much better if you can think of something specific. So if you can think of, well, what is a tax that is put on oil? Something like that. It doesn't have to be specific like dollars and cents or, you know, gallons or barrels of oil, but something that's more, you know, real, real world than just simply, well, somebody puts a tax on a pair of shoes. So I'm going to use oil, and let's come back to the diagram box for a second. In here, you're just going to sketch in. Let me go ahead and show you how I would do that. So here you can see how I, how I tailored the diagram. That's the word I use up here, tailor, tailor to the question. Um, I tailored it to this example of oil. And I just so happen to know the current price of a gallon of gas in Utah. It's about $3.75. And I just so happen to know that the tax on oil is about 50 cents per gallon. So again, these numbers aren't, you know, 100% accurate, but they're accurate enough that it's going to give me more to talk about or a, a more informed discussion as I write my response. Okay, let's move on. When I analyze this, I'm basically going to talk about two different goals that someone might have for an indirect tax. So first of all, the most common goal is, and, and everyone will do this, is it is going to raise revenue for the government. Now it might be a general tax, you know, VAT or sales tax in the United States that is simply trying to just make money to be spent. And I could talk about, you know, how that's going to happen and, and how much money is going to be raised. If I go up to the diagram, I can talk about, you know, sales tax on here. There's also sales tax on here. I'm showing specifically an excise tax. Um, but I could talk about, you know, this, this amount of money from 375 to 325, so 50 cents per gallon um, is going to be raised and then that can be spent by the government for whatever purpose. I'm also going to talk about specifically an excise tax and how an excise tax uh, tax is on a specific uh, product like gasoline or alcohol or cigarettes or uh, tires, for example. Now, when I do that, this is a new term. So because that's a new term, I'm also going to put it over here with the definitions so that I remember, oh yeah, I should say what that is. Okay, coming back down to my analysis, the second goal, oh, I'm, go I'm sorry, I'm going to need to talk about how if I'm trying to raise revenue, it's going to be more effective with products with inelastic PED because people won't buy that much less than it will be with products with very highly elastic PEDs. The second goal then of an indirect tax is to limit consumption of a certain good or service. So this is more common with, you know, cigarettes or alcohol or something like that. Um, so I might talk about how this is going to be more effective if the product has a highly elastic PED because that is actually going to um, get people to buy it less. Now when I'm talking about an issue of sustainability, we can see that this isn't going to work very well with oil because oil tends to have rather inelastic PED. So I don't want to get too much evaluation in there because it's not a Part B question, but I'm, I can hit on that for just a little bit. Okay, let's go back and talk about big picture here. I've added a few more definitions in. Obviously, government intervention, that's, you know, kind of the part of the syllabus we're talking about right now. I put in PED since I mentioned that. And I also put in law of demand because essentially we are talking about the law of demand. Oh, well, I better plug in. Um, when you raise the price of something, people want it less. That's a fundamental economic concept. What I mean by thesis and others here, and, and where I've put them right now doesn't really matter, I was just brainstorming. So looking at them all together, I think really what the essay or what the question is about, if you go back to our, dis our decipher above, why does a government do this if they're unpopular? Well, looking at the definitions and the analysis we're going to do, they do it to raise money or to limit consumption when they can. If they were trying to raise money and you know put put a tax on a very uh, elastic good, they're going to fail. If they're going to try to limit consumption of a very inelastic good, like cigarettes, for example, oh, they're going to fail as well. And that's why you know the the jury is in, and taxes on cigarettes really don't change 
um, how much people smoke. They, they don't tend to. So that's going to be, end up being kind of the thesis of your response, what you're actually saying. Of course, you're going to use the diagram to help illustrate that. Looking back, probably you're going to need two diagrams for this question, one with a more elastic demand curve, one with a less elastic demand curve. But essentially, that's it. When you do this for me, um, what I want to see is I want to see the definitions, but I want to see these tailored. I want you to define these terms. Don't just write them in here like I've done. Actually write out how you would define them. But the key is that you've tailored them to the question that you're going to answer. Eh, it's probably not going to change it too much, but maybe a little bit. Okay. I do want to see the diagrams you're going to use here. You can just sketch. You don't need to make it nice and neat. Um, again, put an example in here and again, tailor it. Talk about how that's going to help you answer the question. Okay. And then finally, do include kind of an, uh, an outline of your analysis, how you're going to go through. For part B, you'll see that's all the same, except we add in just this last bit of evaluation. What are you going to critique? What are you going to talk about? Um, what are you going to compare and contrast? Whatever. So these are just kind of the, the arguments you might put in. Okay, guys, this is going to be something we've worked with a lot this year. So this is your first stab at it. So do your best, see how it goes. And obviously, I'm going to offer my, um, my critique of, of how you've done and how you might do it better. All right. Talk to you guys later.